How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to bring you guys the next installment in the Elite 64 team selection. So I thought that Game Week 10 or upcoming to Game Week 10 would be a perfect scenario for the next installment in the series. As you guys would have known last week, come Game Week 9, a lot of managers have actually used their wild cards in blank Game Week 8. And therefore I'm assuming that most of the other managers might have used it pre-Game Week 10. So Game Week 8, Game Week 9, we're going to check the current template after most managers that hopefully have used their first wild card. And that's why I think this video is going to be super interesting. Now, if you guys are new to this kind of series or this channel, what the Elite 64 is, it's a mini league in FPL run by the FPL General, and it's an invite only. So basically 64 of the world's best managers, and thankfully I find myself in that league. I actually gained entry from FPL General's Community League in the season that I finished 22nd. So yes, you guys can actually join this league, gain entry into it through the community league, or I do know there are invitational promotion leagues. But what I've actually done this season, I've wrote a Python script that tracks this mini league, all 64 managers. I'm going to show you guys the template, the campsy picks, the chip strategies, or pre-game week 10. So that's all you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So the first talking point is basically the reason why I wanted to create this video for game week 10, and that's going to be the wildcard chip. So in blank game week 8, 54.7% of the Elite 64 used the wildcard chip, and that's how we managed to get a refresh template in that video. So how many of the Elite 64 actually used the wildcard chip in game week 9? That's going to be 23.4%, and that's actually not as high as I thought it would be. I thought if managers didn't wildcard in game week 8, game week 9 was going to be super popular. We might see about 90% of the overall managers in the Elite 64 having used their first wildcard. But as you guys can see on screen there, 21.9% haven't even activated the chip. Now, will these managers use it in game week 10? Probably not. I think game week 12, game week 13 looks like a pretty good space to use the first wildcard. But at least now in this video, we basically have roughly 80% of the wildcard template. Now, will we be actually doing these videos for the upcoming game weeks? Probably not, unless you guys really want them. I just thought that game week 10 will be an interesting one to do it as we now have a refreshed wildcard template. But let me know in the comments down below if you guys do want this video to be kind of game weekly or you find with kind of the odd update. But now going on to the actual template of the Elite 64, and as I mentioned, about 80% of the Elite 64 have used the wildcard chip, so therefore this should be a pretty concrete template from now to Game Week 16. Now in terms of its overall structure, you guys won't be able to afford this entire team. What I want to kind of show you here is the top five defenders, midfielders that are currently owned in the Elite 64, the top two goalkeepers, and finally the top three forwards. So for example, let's go on to those goalkeepers. The goalkeeper pairing of choice at the current moment is going to be Nick Pope at 62.5% and then Danny Ward at just under 58%. Now whether these managers actually went for this pairing or they went for kind of a Danny Ward and an Iverson, that's going to be quite an interesting debate, but definitely interesting to see that 62.5% do own Nick Pope for that Newcastle coverage. Now I mentioned this in my wildcard kind of Game Week 9 team that I probably wouldn't own too many Newcastle assets. Then what happens? They lose their clean sheet against 10 men Fulham a little bit late into the fixture. So that kind of worries me for these upcoming game weeks. But definitely the two most popular goalkeepers of choice as the next couple, there was a Raya in there. We also had a Guita and their ownership was around the 10% mark. Then moving on to our defensive department, you guys can see that more premium assets are kind of still being highly owned. We have Cancelo, we have James, Trent. Trippier comes in as kind of a more mid-price option. And then Gaye comes in as the cheap option of choice. Now what's interesting to see in the defensive department is no defenders owned by 100% of the Elite 64, Cancelo the closest with just above 92%, and then definitely the current template is going to be Trippier and Reese James. So 89% and 87% respectively for those two options, so as you guys can see the back three of choice is definitely those first ones. What I wanted to also show you is that Trent at the fourth position, 32.8% are those wildcarders, chances are if you guys do have Trent, probably wildcarded him in. Do those wildcarders regret having him with the poor defensive form that Liverpool are currently showing? Arsenal and Man City up next, don't think it's a clinch in either of those two games, but maybe Trent can get an attacking return. But if the budget option of choice is someone that I can get behind, Gay at just below 22%, great fixtures coming up for Crystal Palace, yes, kind of game week at 9 wasn't that great against Chelsea, but from game week 10 to game week 16, some of the best fixtures in FPL. Now what I would suggest, if you guys don't have coverage of Cancelo, Trippier or James, I potentially look at bringing one of these options in, maybe for a Trent replacement, if you guys want to take the Liverpool defender out. Then moving on to midfoot apartment and the trend of no 100% owned option is going to continue. Martinelli used to be that asset, but I'm assuming on a wild card, maybe with those Arsenal fixtures coming up the blank in game week 12, some of those wild carders took him out. So his ownership has dropped from 100% to just above 90%. After getting an assist against Spurs in the North London derby, maybe some of those wild carders regret that decision as he still looks like great value for money. 
Madison comes up next, actually playing tonight and recording this on Monday night before the Leicester game is actually kicked off. But he comes in with a nice ownership of 81.2%. That's just going to be credited to the nice figures coming up for Leicester. Madison hasn't had the best of form, but is ticking along nicely over these opening game weeks. We then have my main man, Kevin De Bruyne, in the midfield department. Definitely kind of the premium or premium midfielder of choice to own at the current moment, with City flying so high. So KDB comes in with just above 45% ownership, and as I mentioned, definitely the highest owned and most well-performing midfielder premium of choice, and that explains that ownership. If you're asking, cast your eyes to the right-hand side, Mo Salah at 32.8%, he's kind of competing with KDB, and have even seen some managers with Salah this week, brought him in on a wild card, and now for game week 10, they're moving him to KDB. So that is quite interesting for me to see, but I only assume that the players that do own Salah probably wildcarded him in or brought him in for that Brighton captaincy. But just before that, Zaha at just above 39%, pretty respectable there. Nice fixtures coming up. A wildcard template choice, which I can understand. Already spoke about Gay, Crystal Palace of lovely fixtures from game week 10 to game week 16. So overall, what I would say is the kind of midfield four of Martinelli, Madison, and Zaha, and then one of the premiums, either Salah or KDV, is going to be the template of choice. Now finally, going on to our four department, and we finally have that 100% mark. You guys would have already guessed that it's Haaland at 100% ownership. So I'm really need to explain that to you guys. You understand that Haaland is a freak of nature this Premier League season, scoring so many points, and hopefully you guys did captain him in game week 9. Next up is going to be Mitrovic at 90.8%. This is going to be interesting for me to see if he is actually going to be injured for the long term, as that's a lot of managers that have to shift him out. So keep your eyes on the news, because if Mitrovic is going to be out for a long amount of time, I would suggest taking him out. But I guess the question is for who? An easy option will probably be Solanke, so if you guys don't own him, maybe keep him on the radar. Now you might have thought Solanke was going to be the third option of the Elite 64. Yes, the Elite 64 has kind of a heavy Twitter influence, but no, the next option is actually going to be Ivan Tony. So Tony comes in at just below 36%, and I'm pretty sure those managers will be pretty sad in Game Week 9 after he blanked against Bournemouth. Now I probably think they will keep him because the fixtures, although they aren't the best, I think that Brentford can score against anyone, can't score against Bournemouth, but watch them score in Game Week 10. So in terms of this front three, I think this front three is affordable. Haaland, Mitrovic, and Tony are all at a reasonable price, so I would say this is the template front three. But now that you guys have seen the template on screen right now, let me know how many of these options you guys actually own. Do you own Salah over KDB? Do you own Ivan Tony over Solanke? You guys can definitely see after the kind of game week 8 and now on wild cards, a template has been formed. Now finally, before we get into the transfer plan and the kind of team selection for the upcoming game week 10, I just want to touch on captaincy because this is a very important talking point right now in terms of perma-captaining. So you guys know who you're going to perma-captain for game week 10, game week 11, so on and so forth. It's going to be Erling Haaland. But no, the Elite 64 did not all captain Erling Haaland. Only 81.3%. So if you didn't captain Erling Haaland, at least you can find some comfort in this decision. So the majority of these kind of non-Haaland captainers actually went for Mo Salah at 17.2%. Then third up was going to be James Madison. So Madison, unfortunately, hasn't played as I am recording this video, but Salah has, and there has been a massive kind of discrepancy between these two assets. But what I wanted to show you is that although the Elite 64 is probably quite historically loyal to Mo Salah, there has been a massive shift to Erling Haaland, and rightly so. So I do think come game week 10, if we do this video next week, we'll see Erling Haaland at about 100% captaincy. Now in terms of the transfer plan for the upcoming game week 10, it's actually quite a hard game week to predict because the template looks pretty respectable. This is purely due to the fact that these managers wildcard in game week 8, game week 9, or at least the majority, about 80% of them did wildcard. So you would assume that the starting 11 for the short term looks pretty respectable. But there is one move that probably will be locked in, is that if Mitrovic is out for a long amount of time, I do see some managers kind of transferring him out. They might just bench him for next week, use two free transfer to go to Harry Kane, that sort of thing. But that's definitely the one move that I can point out. In terms of the defense, in terms of the midfield and the rest of the forwards, I can't see too many moves as the tempo looks pretty set. But if you guys can see a move that maybe is penciled out, maybe a trend down to a James, that sort of thing, drop in the comments down below. But if they do have the tempo at 3-4-3, can't see too many moves to be honest. Now the final talking point to go over is going to be all about the team selection for the upcoming game week 10 and here's where I basically show you the starting 11 of the template. So right off the bat on the bottom right hand side you guys can afford this draft. I had 0.6 in the bank so if you have 0.6 less still can afford this template team and this just shows that the wild card has been very dependent on the template. Now starting off on the bench, don't really talk about these assets, but their ownership is super high. Danny Ward and Gay we know, but Andres Pereira is currently the most highly owned midfield in the Elite 64. Nico Williams also has a pretty strong kind of representation, but most of these assets will be on your bench most game weeks. Moving on to the starting 11, and I do feel like there might be a little bit of debate depending if Danny Ward keeps a clean sheet tonight against Nottingham Forest, if he even starts. But if he does start, there could be a decision to make between Brentford at home for Pope and Bournemouth away for Danny Ward. But I guess if you guys do own Solanke, might hope that he starts. But in the Elite 64, he's not actually present. And that's why Danny Ward might be the option to go for. But I've gone for Nick Pope for a safety point of view. And to show you guys the real template. 
The back three then picks itself, Cancelo, Trippier and Reese James, all pretty strong fixtures. You guys can see home fixtures and those are always going to equal hopefully some AFL points. Now same Brentford game for Trippier, but let's just hope they do keep a clean sheet if you guys are going to stack the defense with double Newcastle. The midfield apartment there, De Bruyne, Madison, Martini and Zaha is a perfect representation of the current template, but you guys can also swap out Salah for De Bruyne. Now, great fixtures on paper here, even the Liverpool game for Martinelli on paper, that looks like a hard one, but when you guys have seen Liverpool defend, atrocious defending at the current moment, and that's how Martinelli and Arsenal could actually get some attacking returns there. But otherwise, no complaints, Leeds for Zaha, great fixture, Bournemouth away for Madison, great fixture as well, and then finally Southampton at home with De Bruyne, where they might look to best that 9-0 that Southampton experienced a couple of seasons ago. Then moving on to our forward department, talking about Man City, we're going to mention Erling Haaland and I've slapped the cam T on him already because you guys know the Elite 64 will go for Erling Haaland and I'm pretty sure all of AFL will as well. So I don't have to mention much about him, the only thing I would say is that watch out for the Champions League, if he does play against Copenhagen on Wednesday there might be some rotation there but I just think that he'll play probably both games. We then have Mitrovic against West Ham away, not the end of the water if he actually misses that one, West Ham have picked up a lot of form recently and that's why that could be quite a tough game. Then we have Ivan Tony against Newcastle, and if Fulham can score against Newcastle with 10 men, pretty sure Ivan Tony and Brentford can. So there might be a few goals on that one, but for now, in the Elite 64 temp, you're kind of betting on the double clinch of Newcastle on Ivan Tony Hall. But currently, this will be the starting 11 of the temp, but you might swap out Salah for De Bruyne if you want to, to represent your own team. But right now, this will be the Elite 64 template on current high ownership. So at least we were able to afford this, so this is a real representation, and you guys can see the impact of the wild card in Game Week 8 and Game Week 9, and how many of these options do you guys own in your current team? But this is Corrupt the guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please have a like if you didn't subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Let me know if you're enjoying this series. I know that I am quite informative for my own kind of FPL transfer plan to see how the managers around me in the Elite 64 are actually doing. But I'm Sunolf, Navy FPL, and I'm out. Cheers, bye.